This gorgeous piece of land located in the border between the Pacific and the Indian Ocean is among the first countries to put on a new calendar on the wall. At the same time, this is also the go-to place where new technology is first tested. But the first fact has nothing to do with the second. In this short video, I'm gonna share with you the reasons why New Zealand has always been a lab for new technology, some famous examples, and what does that mean for the Kiwis themselves. Hi, I'm Yonka. Welcome to Blank Note. First things first. English, being one of the most popular languages in the world, and also the official language of Innovation Valley, the perfect ground for experiments, has to speak that language. And what do you know? The island's official language checks the box. Second of all, although separated by literal oceans from the rest of the world, the population has always been tech-savvy. They are good, experienced users, offering the best quality of criticism required as feedback. Part of it has to do with the fact that they have always been on the forefront of new technology, but more on that later. Taxes, laws and government is clear, quite similar with US and Canada. So documentation and filing will not require reinventing the whole company to fit a new country's policies. And lastly, when you want to try something risky in your lab, worst case scenario it goes wrong, you want the damage to be minimal. 5 million people is a county for US or Canada. If things go south, it's easier to pull the plug, and chances are, they will never hear about it on the other coast. Examples? As of today, New Zealand has one of the best contactless payments coverage in the world. That is because the EFTPOS system was first trialed here in 1980. Two years later, it started to appear in the United States. Apple Pay, Google Wallet, eh, old news for Kiwis. Sway, Microsoft's website building app, was previewed in New Zealand in October 2014. Facebook has tried a number of features here, including a single column timelines and highlighted posts. Sadly, not all of the examples are good news. Kiwis have been used as guinea pigs for far less brighter purposes as well. Between 1952 and 1958, the United Kingdom conducted multiple nuclear weapons trials here, using highly radioactive materials, and the locals were kept mostly unaware of the risks. China allegedly uses the place to test its influence campaigns, including strategies for breaking up the global reach of the United States. But even those of pure intentions often come with a series of effects that weigh in in both ways in the shoulders of the locals. If you're a local startup, you're not only competing with your peers, but also with big corporations who have all the resources in the world. It might train you to work even harder, bring smarter solutions to the table, but the fight is not fair. The chances on your end are far weaker. Also, this new technology is not actually being developed here, so no actual new jobs. And finally, they come, test, pay some taxes, and fly away. New Zealanders feed data to all kinds of experiment campaigns, because ain't nobody got time for 300 pages of terms of agreement. Privacy is also at stake. So big tech companies benefit from a large pool of data. New Zealanders, on the other hand, debatable.